What's up, you two? This is Rashon35 with another Q&A. Let's do it. Alright guys, so today's question is what are ohm loads with regards to speakers and amplifiers? Every speaker has a voice coil, whether it be a 3 inch, 2 inch, 1 inch, 4 inch, depending on what, what kind of speaker you have. Each voice coil has, a, has resistance, which is uh, determined by the voice coil, the, the size and the uh, num number of strands and all that. So you could have a single voice coil or two voice coils on the same coil. So yeah, ohm loads come in a lot of different configurations. You could have single 4 ohm, single 8 ohm. Uh, so you could have dual 1 ohm, dual 2 ohm, dual 4 ohm, dual 0.7, dual 0.5, dual 1.4. It's just all based on what you, what your preference is and how you, how you want to go about wiring your amplifier. And the amplifier. you have to be able to match the ohm load of speakers you have to the amplifier. It's basically like a little signal that it sends to the amp to let it know what it, which which power to to give it. Because if you didn't know what impedance you were wiring your amp at. It might be too low or it might be too high. If it's too high, you're not going to get any power. If it's too low, your app won't turn on. They're just going to protect. So when purchasing subwoofers or speakers, you have to take into account the ohm load. It's not just wiring up and, and putting it into an amp. There's amplifiers that can take ohm loads of 1 ohm, 2 ohms. And if you bridge an amplifier, it's, it's 4 ohms, but it's another story. Like back in the day when I, got, when I had my very first setup, I had no idea what ohms were, how to determine how, how much power you're going to get from your amp. Amplifiers have ratings, and I post a picture. Well, all amps do more power at a lower ohm load, but there's, there's a limit to which ohm load they can take, they can handle more resistance. So an example is there's like my a DC 5K does 5,000 watts at one ohm, and I forgot how much at four ohms or two ohms, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it up. So when when picking with subs and or speakers you want to run on an amp, you have to take into account the ohm load that the voice calls have. But not only that, you have to take into account the RMS wattage, obviously. If those subs handle 500 watts each and you're wiring up like a 5,000 watt amp, you know, that's too much power for the, for the subs. So you have to match the RMS wattage for the subs and amps. Make sure it all matches. So say you want to wire your subs to 1 ohm, you have to be able to, to rearrange the ohm loads by wiring in parallel or series. So wiring in parallel is basically from positive to positive or negative to negative. That's called, that's parallel. And series is when you take different uh, pairs of voice codes are positive and negative, positive and negative. You take one of the positive and uh, run it to one of the other negatives, and the ones that are remaining be what you run to your, to your amp. And that's called series. And what that does is it doubles the ohm load. So parallel cuts in half. So say you have two dual voice coils, four ohm voice coils, and you run them in, par in parallel, positive, positive, negative, negative. You split it in half, four divided by two, so now you have a two ohm load. So you do it in series. You, you run from one positive to negative, or vice versa, doesn't matter. You will cut, you will double that. So series, you double. So four times two is eight. So you have an eight ohm load. So when wiring it to your app, you have to make sure that you you read the book or the, the specifications, or let you know what's the ohm load that your app can take. There's apps that could cut, that could be wired to one ohm or two ohms or whatever. So it's not just about getting a big app or you have to be able to know how to wire everything too. So the same website, the 12 voltcom that will show you how to wire wire a speaker. So I'll give you guys an example right now. I'll post it up in the video. So say you have two speakers, right? So two speakers. They are dual forum voice coils. And I'll show you guys how you can wire them. There's, the website will help you a lot. There's, there's so many benefits to using it. So you could either run each voice coil in parallel and then parallel again. Or you can run it in series, series, and then parallel, which will give you four ohms. So, and the first one will give you one ohm. So this is just an example of how you can figure out your ohm load. Your ohm load is basically your resting. When you put your multimeter to, to, uh, to measure the ohm load, that's resting. But when your system plays, that, that, that impedance fluctuates, it goes up and down, depending on the frequency you're playing, and if you're playing music, the frequencies are all over the place. So, so that's why people sometimes wire, wire below, because 
and, this, and this also has to do with box rise, which I'll do in another video. If you guys want to hear about box rise, let me know. I recommend you guys go as, as low as the, the minimum, which is sometimes 1 ohm, 2 ohms. Anything, anything below that, I don't recommend it unless you're experienced. But um, that's basically ohm loads. Just a resistance that you can that you match up with your amplifier to see how much power you can get to it. Alright guys, this is Run35, another Q&A. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it, if it was helpful. Alright guys, hit me up with any questions you need, and I'll be sure to answer them. Alright guys, peace out, and drop the beat. <laughs>